Polycythemia vera is a slow growing blood cancer in which your bone marrow makes too many red blood cells. Now these excess cells thicken your blood, slowing its flow and potentially causing complications like blood clots, which can then lead to a heart attack or stroke. Today on Behind the Mystery, we're on location in the Big Apple to learn more about this rare disease. Take a look. Our story brings us here to New York City today to find out more about a rare blood cancer which causes overproduction of red blood cells. Polycythemia vera, otherwise known as PV, leads to thickening of the blood and can result in serious health problems such as heart attack or stroke. I was diagnosed with PV in 2006 as part of a routine physical that my firm required that I get annually and I came up with a high red cell count. Norm for a male is 45% and I was probably 60 plus percent. PV is a very rare condition. There are only about six to 7,000 new cases of PV diagnosed every year in the United States. This is within the 350 million people. Polycythemia vera is incurable cancer where there are abnormalities leading to overproduction of the blood cells, particularly red blood cells. The cells stick together, they are not normal, they are malignant. So the main problem with polycythemia vera is increased risk of thrombosis or blood clotting, which can lead to untimely death of these patients. Many patients' PV is not as routinely discovered as David's. Often due to a lack of awareness of the disease itself, patients are generally diagnosed after a cardiovascular symptom or event. I was actually asymptomatic uh, with the PV, so it was strictly the, the blood test that, uh, that showed it, uh, and it was advancing pretty rapidly and it was a pretty aggressive uh, disease. Polycythemia is a disease that's seen more often in mature adults, that is to say it's more common in the 50 and 60 year old age group. Patients often come in with an advanced form with a very high blood count because this, the symptoms are so insidious, and by insidious I mean so commonplace that patients often overlook the significance of them. I came to meet Dr. Silver uh, when I found his name on the internet as a prolific writer of scientific papers dealing with polycythemia vera as well as the other MPNs. Um, and I decided that since he was in New York and I was working in New York, I wanted to start seeing him. A vital part of David's PV management plan is his bi-monthly visit to see Dr. Silver at the Myeloproliferative Neoplasm Center located at Weill Cornell Medical Center. Uh, regular monitoring is critically important. Uh, it's done at the doctor's office because you have to have the blood drawn and then analyzed to see what the counts are. We treat two things. One, we treat the disease itself to turn off the red blood cell production. And two, we treat to avoid the consequences of the disease, that is to say, try to halt the progression of it. And third, we want to treat the complications to avoid thromboses or the clotting. My advice to someone who's just uh, found out they have polycythemia vera is go see a hematologist that sees lots and lots of MPN patients. If you can, get to an academic center. They're deeply involved with the clinical research that's ongoing and the research is exploding in the uh, MPN world. Patients often ask us when they are first diagnosed with polycythemia vera, what is their long-term outlook, what we call in medicine the prognosis. And I want to reassure anybody who has polycythemia who is watching this show that it has an excellent prognosis when properly treated. Due to innovative research into further understanding the disease, advances have been made in the diagnosis of PV, disease management, as well as in evolution and treatment approaches. The discovery that in 95% of PV patients, there is an abnormality in the JAK2 gene has not only simplified diagnosis, but can also be used in following response to treatments. This is exciting time for polycythemia vera patients. The diagnostic process for PV has improved. The testing for the JAK2 gene, which is mutated in almost every patient with PV, you can do that test on blood which would lead you to possibly then do the bone marrow and make sure that the patient has a polycythemia vera. Once we have a diagnosis of polycythemia vera made, then we institute in most of the patients phlebotomy, a bloodletting, 
to decrease the number of red blood cells, and most of the patients are giving aspirin, a baby aspirin to decrease the stickiness between the blood cells and decrease the risk of blood clotting. Many patients, in addition, may require cytoreductive therapy. The cytoreductive therapy would interfere with the production of the blood cells in the bone marrow or kill the blood cells in the blood. According to national guidelines, the two medications that are suggested as a first-line therapy for patients with polycythemia vera are chemotherapy agent hydroxyurea or biological agent interferon. Therapy for polycythemia vera has evolved over time. We are exploring new medications that are biologically directing its efficacy on the production of the cells in the bone marrow and change the bone marrow environment. This is exciting time to participate in clinical studies from the patient perspective to help us develop new medications and find a cure for PV. You can live a long time with PV. Uh, many people live with it for 20 or 30 years and people die with it instead of of it. So it's, it's not a death sentence by any means. However, the disease does tend to progress. And so you wanna be actively involved to stop that progression to the extent you can. We certainly know how to manage uh, this disease and put it into remission. Uh, many diseases are incurable in medicine. I think what a patient wants to, wants to know is whether or not they can be helped. That's the first thing. And it's very important to stress that we can help all patients with polycythemia vera. There's an awful lot of information on the websites about the disease, about uh, clinical trials, and there are any number of support groups all across the country that people join. I'm part of a community in the MPN Research Foundation because virtually everybody on the board either has the disease themselves or a relative has the disease. So we have lots of offline conversations about how things are going and what you're being treated with and how you're feeling. So it is a good thing to have, be part of a community. For more information about Polycythemia Vera, visit the MPN Research Foundation at mpnrf.org. And you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com.